Hi, my name is Mark Chandick, and I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about the basics of life insurance. The purchase of life insurance may be one of the most important decisions you ever make in your financial life. However, it's a decision that most of us will put off until something happens that hits close to home. That's really not too surprising, since we all have a built-in mechanism that avoids thinking about death. But that kind of procrastination can be devastating to a family or business. Let me explain. There are three basic questions to be asked, and they have to be asked and answered in the right sequence, or all the answers will be wrong. The three questions are, do I need life insurance? How much do I need? What kind should I buy? Let's take them one at a time. First, do I need life insurance? The quick and easy answer is that if someone will suffer financially when you die, you need life insurance. That could mean your family, perhaps aging parents, or maybe even your business partner and employees. Sometimes we might be inclined to say, well, they'll be okay, and maybe that's true. But it's important to remember that we don't get a chance to change our minds once we're gone. We need to face reality while we can do something about it. The second question is how much should I have? Some experts recommend a rule of thumb that runs anywhere from five to 20 times your annual income. Obviously, with that kind of spread, the rule of thumb isn't very helpful. So how do you determine if you need 100,000, 250,000, 500,000 or more in life insurance coverage? The best way to figure out what you need is to have an insurance professional conduct what's called a financial needs analysis. Here's how it works. You'll start by gathering all of your personal financial information and estimating what your family members would need after you're gone to meet their financial obligations. To calculate this figure, you'll need to think through three types of expenses. First are immediate expenses, such as funeral expenses, uncovered medical costs, taxes and outstanding debts you'd want paid when you die, such as automobile debt and credit card bills. Second is ongoing expenses, which is basically money for your family to live on for a specific period of time. It'll help pay for everyday living expenses like food, clothing, transportation, mortgage or rent payments. And finally, Life insurance proceeds can be used to fund future expenses, such as money to fund a college or retirement savings plan. After you've figured out your family's needs, you'll then want to tally up all of the resources that your surviving family members can draw on to support themselves. This would include things like your spouse's income, savings you've accumulated, and any life insurance you already own. The difference between your family's needs and the resources in place to meet those needs is your need for additional life insurance. Let me share a story with you that illustrates the value of properly calculating the need for life insurance in a very powerful way. Early in my career, I was working with a physician in Southern California who was very busy and didn't give me any time to help him determine the amount of life insurance that was appropriate for his family. Rather, he asked me to simply sell him a $500,000 policy. I complied with his request only to read several months later that he had been killed by a hit-and-run driver while changing the tire on the side of the freeway. I took great pride in being able to deliver the much-needed cash to the family, only to be shocked to learn that the doctor had nine children, three of whom were in college at the time. I distinctly remember sitting in a room with his wife and all of his children when they collectively asked me, is this all there is? I felt badly that I hadn't found some way to break through to the man and convince him to approach the process the proper way. I vowed never again to shortcut the process and to always calculate the real need for life insurance. I never have shortcut the process since, and you should neither. There are no do-overs with life insurance. There's nothing more important than buying the right amount of coverage, and you need to get it right the first time. So after you've figured out how much you need, you're now ready to focus on what kind to buy. There are two fundamental considerations that go into answering this question. First, how long will you need the insurance? And second, how much money do you have in your budget for this expense? The how long you need it question will help you decide if you want term insurance or permanent insurance. Term insurance lasts for a specified period of time, say five years or 10, 20, or maybe even 30 years. If your only need is for funds to pay off a 20-year mortgage at your death, a 20-year term policy would probably be the answer for you. Or if you're concerned about providing funds to take care of your aging parents in their later years, a five or 10 year term policy might do the job. The shorter the period of time the policy lasts, the lower the premium. 
but once the term period is over, you'll have to pay a considerably higher price to maintain it if you want to do so. And you may well have to take another insurance physical to qualify all over again. That means your health must still be good and that you haven't taken up piloting, skydiving, or vehicle racing. Declining health or a dangerous job or hobby can significantly increase the cost of insurance and sometimes can make coverage unaffordable or even unavailable. That leads me to the second kind of insurance, permanent insurance. Permanent insurance is what the name implies. It's with you for life, no matter how old you are when you die. The premiums are projected to remain level over your lifetime and in some cases can be designed to stop at retirement while your coverage remains in force for life. Permanent policies build a cash surrender value that is available if needed in the event of emergencies, opportunities, or college for the kids. Of course, these benefits come with a price. The initial premium for permanent insurance is three to ten times higher than it is for an equivalent amount of term insurance. So if your budget is limited, be sure you buy as much as you need, even if it's all term insurance. But if you have some room in your budget, it usually makes sense to include some permanent insurance in your program. And as time goes on, it will probably make sense to convert some of your term insurance to permanent insurance. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I see my clients make is underestimating how long they'll need life insurance. This was painfully true immediately for many after the dot-com bubble burst in 2000. All of a sudden, you had people who experienced a significant loss in their retirement assets and they were no longer able to retire on time. Life insurance fills the financial gap that exists between your financial needs and your financial realities. The fact that people had to work additional years necessitated owning life insurance for a longer period of time and many were caught unprepared. By owning both types of life insurance, term and permanent, you're better prepared for the unexpected things that happen in life. Let's face it, our financial lives never go as smoothly as the financial press would have us believe. So far, we've looked at life insurance from the context of your personal needs. However, life insurance is a tool that is also utilized by almost every small business in America. Businesses, especially smaller, closely held businesses, utilize life insurance to protect their companies in case of the premature death of an active owner. Life insurance is used to purchase a deceased partner's interest and provide an income stream to the surviving family. Life insurance also may be left to the company to provide a financial cushion to the company in the case of a loss of an active owner or key employee. Life insurance is also utilized to provide cash to equalize the inheritance of a family where only one of the children inherits the company. And finally, to provide cash to pay federal estate tax so that the company doesn't have to be sold to pay the tax liability. These uses of life insurance keep businesses in business families financially secure, and Americans employed. So there you have it. A properly designed life insurance program is as essential to a sound financial plan as a strong foundation is to a home. Do it right, and the future is secure.